So congratulations on the win, and it's always nice to get a finish, but I don't think I've ever seen a finish quite like that. Bro, um, yeah, I poured it on him at the end of the third, knew he was hurt, real bloody. But when I seen his, he told me to throw the elbow, and then when I kind of backed up and seen his ear, like, falling out of his head, I was like, someone said I made a reaction on the video. I was like, ooh, it's over, and uh, it was over. Did you see it right away? You knew immediately? Okay. This when fine. I seen it, it was over. It looked like a brain dangling from his head. Um, it reminded me of uh, Leslie Smith or that big white dude that his ear exploded like 15 years ago. But it was nasty. I heard it was on Dana's handle and it got flagged for being inappropriate. Yeah. I think it's actually the worst one I've ever seen, even worse than those other two you mentioned. Um, Obviously, you want to get the finish, but when you do, you know, injure a guy like that, does part of you feel a bit bad? Like, you don't really want to do that to another person? Yeah, you know, not in the moment, but after, I felt, I felt bad. And they're like, don't worry about him. I was like, hey, if fight's over, it's real bad. So, yeah, it was real bad. I seen him after, you know, we gave each other respect. And the doctors assured me that it was fine. I don't think so, <laughs> you know. Um, I wish him my best, though. On the other hand, you probably will get like 50 grand for it, so, you know. Hey, I hope, you know, they, they do me sometimes around here, but uh, we'll see. Everybody liked it. Uh, blood, baby. On the broadcast, I, I heard you call out a couple of names, Carlos Condit and Vicente Luque. Um, I know you, you said it respectfully, but what about those two interest you? They're bashers, you know. Carlos Condit, um, he's a legend. I, I, I wanted to fight him in WEC. I love his style. I love he's so aggressive, and he just, I love Carlos Condit, and uh, I love fighting legends. I fought um, Tiago Alves. Um, you know, you got to make your idols your rivals, and uh, nothing but respect to him. I, it's all respect, um, but he's a real good fighter. Um, I think it would be a good fight, and Vincente is a G. He goes in there and, you know, has these fight of the night performances. Um, he's a basher, and it'll be a fun fight. Any sort of timeline in your head when you'd like to get back in there? I don't know. I have a baby coming in February. Congrats. Thank you. Baby boy. So I want to see him be born. So unless it's, like, real soon, um, after that. Congratulations, man. Thank you. You certainly lived up to your nickname tonight. <laughs> Is that the most damage or the, the, the biggest carnage you think that you've left the opponent with? there in the cage it's like my name kind of brings it to myself you know i get hurt a lot i get bloody a lot <laughs> like dude you need to change your name from pain but i was able to deliver it i started seeing him really really started getting busted up uh the blood bloody these mouses all this stuff and i don't know if you had like thin skin or what but uh started really putting it on him and there was so much blood, and I started putting my head on him and getting that blood. And once I called the elbow, um, oh, dude, I didn't really see where it landed. It just felt nasty. We've been working those. I've been working on elbows and a lot of Muay Thai stuff and trying to cut with more of the elbow instead of just uh, like a forearm. I'm trying to slice stuff open. And um, like I said, when I seen it, oh, God. I want to see the replay because I remember like no, you don't. backing <laughs> up and knowing. I backed up. Oh, it's over. Oh, God. You know, and uh, it was a good fight. You know, it, it felt great. I know I heard him, but uh, to get a TKO stoppage from something that disgusting, is, uh, I feel pretty good about it. What you, you kind of talked about a little bit there, some of the changes you're made. What sort of uh, changes leading into this and did you have coming in there and what was the game plan for it? Because you definitely looked like you, you, you switched up some things coming up here trying to keep the distance, but you looked great, I thought. Yeah, thank you. Um, I got hurt a while back, like six months ago, so I started um, going southpaw a little bit, started using my kicks. I didn't throw that many kicks, maybe just a couple leg kicks. I threw a head kick at the end that kind of like almost knocked them over. Um, but you know, a lot of it's mental for me. I've, I've been in so many close fights, and I mean, close. If you look at my record, like, I'm, I'm better than it says. And people know, man, I've been hanging with these top 15 guys for this, this whole time. I've been 
seconds away, a point away, a, a punch away from having a really good record in the UFC. Um, fighting guys that look great, and then they fight me, and they look okay. You know, they don't have highlights. Any of these guys' highlight tapes, I'm not on it. If you watch any one of these guys I fought. Um, so, um, a lot of it's me and mentally trying to um, just have fun out there. I have a new mental coach, Danny Patterson, and he watched a bunch of my past fights, all of them actually, with no sound, and watched my mannerisms, and um, we got down to me being authentic. So like the Mike Perry fight, when I have fun, when I'm, when I'm not being so serious and being loose, I fight really well. So I've been training like that, I've been grappling like that, grappling the best guys in the world, training with some of the best guys, and um, it's been paying dividends. I mean, in between those rounds, they feel like two minute rounds, like, like, my cardio, it's, you know, I, you know, I feel good. It feels good to get the win. They said, don't jump on the cage. I jump on the cage. <laughs> um, they got a really cool picture up there. And, uh, you know, I do it for my city. I do it for all the kids. You know, I talk to a lot of kids in my community and go to the schools. And I feel like it's starting to come together. Man, this is my run. It's time to go on this run. Uh, I'm going to beat everybody from here on out. Speaking of, I, I saw something earlier, and before I forget, because I thought when you came out to the weigh-ins, I loved the hair. I, I don't know if that's part of the new power that we're seeing coming from you, but I hope you keep it. Is there plans to keep it? Totally, totally. COVID kind of got me to grow my hair out. Um, I had my hair long when I was young, like in high school, and uh, it kept getting longer during COVID, and longer and longer, and I was like, you know what? I have really nice hair, so... <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't think anyone knew how nice it was, you know, it looks like that, but it's soft and real <laughs> shaped and beautiful, you know, so um, I'm going to grow it out, get my hair braided. It makes me mean, too. When I get my hair braided, it makes me mean, real mean, and so, you know, I'm going to keep it. I hope so. It, lo it looked great. Just jumping back on the mental side. Uh, when you talked about dealing with the mental, when you're coming in here and you, you mentioned your record, you know, you the last couple ones, you, you got a, a couple losses, and then you got to win, you got a couple losses, and then you get a win. Was there any extra pressure that you put on yourself coming in here knowing that you had two losses coming into this one? You know, people ask me that all the time. They say, you know, I've seen this, this stuff that people say, you lost three out of four, or all this stuff. They make it sound bad, you know? And uh, I really don't pay attention to it. Um, I mean, I have that pressure on me, but when you put pressure on yourself, uh, pressure's what I eat, baby. You know, pressure is, pressure's good. Pressure's stress is good. It, it, it brings the best out of me. So that's what it is. That's awesome. Last one for me. Last time you got the finish, and they mentioned on the broadcast as well, was 2016. Is that something that's in the back of your head where you're like, damn, I didn't get another one? And, you know, now, now you could say, I got one right now, and the, the, the clock starts that over again. That was four years ago, right? That was, I think, the same weekend. Um, Eric Montano hit him in the back of the ear in Mexico City and finished him in the first round, I believe. That was my last yeah, UFC finish. Two four days years ago. Yeah. Yeah, so about five Five years ago, four years ago. Four years, yeah. Yeah, I was saying I like fighting in November, man. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, you know, I used to finish everybody, and you know, the UFCs they got tough guys, and like I said, stuff didn't go my way. And I, and, and a lot of the times I got so serious and so stiff. Um, it's just a fight, you know. I go and you're like, it's war, it's war, and then you get stiff and you're so just tight and. Then you got to relax and then, you know, throw. So I'm really focusing on being loose and smooth like James Brown, man. And uh, you'll see you, you're going to see some carnage coming up here real soon. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you very much. Congrats. Thank you, man.